Hey y'all, today we will be going over word problems and when to use mean, median, and mode, the measures of central tendency. Um, in this lesson, we're going to walk through some practice problems in order to practice when to use mean, median, and mode, and we're going to do them in example format. So let's just dive straight in. Example problem number one. Jesse's math teacher said that their final class grade is based on the average of all exam grades. Jesse has gotten 93, 87, 71, and 97 on her math exams. What measure of central tendency will she use to calculate the average? So take a second, pause, figure out what measure of central tendency that Jesse will use. So we know that Jesse is looking for the average. And we know that mean measures the average of a data set. So this one was pretty straightforward. We're going to be using mean to find the average of all of her exam grades. We know that mean is the average. So anytime a word problem asks you for the average, you know you'll be using the mean. So how do we find the mean? We know that the mean is the sum of all of the data points over the number of data points. So we know the mean is going to be 93 plus 87 plus 71 plus 97 divided by 4. Um, with some quick math, we know that the numerator is equal to 348 divided by 4. And so with the calculator, we can say that 348 divided by 4 is 87. So that is the mean of this. This is the average of Jesse's um, math exam grades, 87. Generally, mean problems are going to be pretty straightforward. Um, if the question asks for an average, mean is the way to go. You can also see that there's no outlier in this data set, um, and so it's not to spread out, and so uh, mean is an accurate way of describing this data. Let's go to example problem number two. Megan wants to get an accurate picture of household salary in her neighborhood. The salaries for people in her neighborhood are the following. What measure of central tendency will most accurately describe the data? So where our options are mean, median, and mode. Mean, as we just saw, covers the average. Median covers the middle value. And mode is the most frequent value. So we see when we're looking at this data set right here of the salaries, we see that for the most part, they're pretty similar. But there's an outlier right here. I'm actually going to do the outlier in a different color. This is an outlier. Outlier are points of data that are away from the rest of the data. So they cause the data to spread a lot. You can see 87, 94, 103, and 97 are relatively close to each other. But then we have this number, 55,000, that is so far away from everything else. So this is an outlier. Outliers don't work well with mean because it drastically shifts the mean. And we have a lesson on that if you want to go over why exactly that is. The mode tells us the most frequent data point, which is also not really helpful because, for one, this data set doesn't have a, med uh, doesn't have a mode. excuse me, um, So that's not very helpful. The median, on the other hand, is good for asymmetrical qualitative data. And it's not really affected by an outlier. So let's find the median. So here we know we are going to be finding the median of this data set which is the middle value. So what's the first thing we do when we're looking for the median? We put all of the data points in numerical order from least to greatest. So the least value here is 55,000. Next biggest value is 87,000. After that, we have 94,000 then 97,000, and lastly, we have 103,000. 
So in a different color, we are going to find the middle value. So we're going to cross off this value on the left and this value on the right. Cross off another value on the left and another value on the right. And that means this middle value is our median. So the median of this data set is 94,000. That means if Megan wants to get this accurate picture here of her house, of the household salary in, in her neighborhood, we can say that the median household salary is 94,000. Example number three. At her birthday party, Charlotte asks everyone to go around and say their favorite Taylor Swift song. In order, people respond with, all too well, shake it off, blank space, new romantics, all too well, new romantics, all too well, Mr. Perfectly Fine. Charlotte wants to know which song is the most popular. What measure of central tendency should she use? Pause the video and take a second to try this one on your own. So we know we are looking for the most popular data point. Most popular might make you think mode, which is true. But another thing that will make you think mode is that this question uses qualitative data. It's not using numbers. You can't, if you don't have numbers, you can't use median. And if you don't have numbers, you can't use mode. Here we've got nominal data. I'm going to write that here. This is, scroll down a little bit, this is called nominal data. And so mode is the best way to answer this problem. Mode is the most frequent. So how will we solve it? Well, we'll be looking for the frequency of this data set, and so we'll make a frequency table. So we are going to, oops, make a table here. Here, I'm gonna use like this. It's gonna be a big table. And so we're gonna have the song in this column and the frequency in this column. Oops. So this first song in order is All Too Well. So we're going to write All Too Well. And we know All Too Well shows up one time, two times, three times. So the frequency of All Too Well is three. Next in order is Shake It Off. We know Shake It Off shows up once. It only seems to show up once. We're going to frequency is one. The next song is blank space, shows up one time, only once. So we'll write blank space here. It only shows up once. Next, we've got new romantics that shows up once and twice. So we'll have new romantics as the song. And we know it's frequency is two. And the last song here is Mr. Perfectly Fine. And so we'll add that at the bottom, Mr. Perfectly Fine. And that only shows up once. So because we're looking for the mode, we know we are looking for the data point that is the most frequent. And so we're looking for the song that has the highest frequency. And we can see that that is all too well. All Too Well has a highest frequency at three. So Charlotte can say that All Too Well is the most popular song. So let's summarize this really quick. We went through all these word problems. We figured out um, how to answer all these questions. But how do we know that this is, like how can we summarize the advantages and disadvantages of all these measures of central tendency? So let's break it down. Let's start with median. Median is good, so a positive. It's for describing asymmetrical data. 
symmetrical data. So that's data with an outlier. So as we saw with this previous example, problem number two here, our outlier is 55,000. And so median is really good for that kind of data. However, median is not uh, good for qualitative data. So a negative, so this is a pro, a con is it doesn't work with qualitative or nominal data. With qualitative or nominal data. We've got mean. Mean is the average. Um, a pro of mean is that it's really good for symmetrical data points. Pro, so it's really good for symmetrical data points, so no outlier. Um, and it's really good for big data sets. Big data sets. So if you've got like hundreds of values, mean is the way to go. But a con is that mean is highly affected by outliers. So if you've got major outliers in a data set, mean is, it's, it's gonna mess with the mean. Mode is the most frequent data point. And so mode is all is very good if you're working with qualitative or nominal data. So we saw with example problem three, when we're looking at the Taylor Swift songs, this was really good for mode because there are no numbers. You don't need numbers. Um, another advantage is mode is really easy to graph. Very easy to graph and very easy to read graphs. To let's see, let's say look at and read graphs or charts. But a mode doesn't really tell you much else about the data. So it's very limited in what it tells you. It's very limited in what it tells you. So it only tells you the frequency. It doesn't really describe the data set as a whole. So as you can see, these are the pros and cons of using the different measures of central tendency. And we started out with some example problems on how to, of when to use mean, median, and mode.